Americans of the world who very happily dropped culture off for the rest to pick up like crumbs, <laughs> right? No, we're gonna have um, a century of us regarding the other as a storehouse of our future self. And we will engage that other so we can learn how to be our best person, right? And we'll, we'll do what we're already doing, right? We'll share our cultures and we'll bring into being something else that we don't know what it's gonna be yet, but it's gonna be inspiring and great, right? Because it's gonna be new, but it's gonna be the best of us, right? We're gonna share the best of us, because this is the idea of culture that, um, uh, Matthew Arnold, that's the name I was thinking. Matthew Arnold had that culture was all that was sweetness and light, you know, all that was beautiful and uplifting, right? And Du Bois, he drank, he drank that Kool-Aid. <laughs> he was drunk on that Kool-Aid, right? And he thought, you know, people uh, are wonderful, but not all of us. The cultured people are really the wonderful ones, right? And what we want to do, and this is really what he's talking about with his talented 10th idea, he just wanted black folks who were talented and who got to be cultured to be able to share what they were able to produce as black people with other people and not be hindered because they were black. And if we can introduce a world where that's really happening, wow, that would be awesome, man, <laughs> to be co-workers in the kingdom of culture, okay? That was Du Bois's line from Souls of Black Folk, right? Get past race as domination, right? And get to race as different parts of the human family, mm -hmm. where we get to intermingle and get all lost in each other. If we transcend race, it's gonna be because we're so intertwined that no one can pick out their race out of the mosaic that each person is, right? So we'll transcend it without playing these games of, I don't see it, <laughs> right? Okay, um, so the last piece I have to get on now is the narrative of justice, okay? So I hope I've touched on this already. We started with Aristotle and ethics and wanting to achieve our good. And justice is a virtue, and it was one of the virtues you had to collect in order for you to be happy. We went to the modern age where morality became the focus. And when morality is the focus, you can't really call yourself just unless you contribute to a moral order. Okay? And so this moral order is speaks to the prominence of morality, the priority of morality. In order to be good, in order to have an ethics that's worthy of, the, of, of, of what we expect from ethics, moral theory has to be centered on it. And that's what's happened in the modern age. We've, we've we reordered ethics, so it's not really about achieving your personal good, but it's about rightness first and foremost, and then these other things we think of as secondary. And what I want to say is that what we want to get to is a universal history that is just. The universal is just, just in a sense. It's morally dignified. And it's the story of all people wherein each and every person is respected. In the full sense of the person. In the private life. That's right. So we do. Go on, Harry. Right. So we don't discriminate against people because of who they love. I think what many of our laws do for people if they're gay or lesbian or bisexual or do things in ways that we don't like personally. each other, they have responsibilities to each other, and it's our job to respect and support what they're able to achieve with each other, not judge and okay or deny, but whether they're able to try and find love 
we can't judge that. We have to support that. Um, we have to respect people and who they choose to love and how they choose to contribute to our social good and what they are as creatures of God. <clears throat> Human beings have the capacity to order themselves and their capacity to order themselves should be respected. Their reason, their conscience, and their personal integrity. Sorry, my voice is <coughs> it's cold and I'm all emotionally broken up. <coughs> so, <coughs> people ought to be respected in terms of their capacity to reason, their capacity to suffer. So we should respect their feelings, we should respect their minds. And I think this is important theoretically for me because this captures these two modern theories about what morality is. Kant emphasizes respect, reason, and his power to grasp the moral law. And we ought to respect that. They ought to be at the core of morality. And we also, uh, via the, the, the utilitarians and consequentialists, and the idea that you produce consequences that are good, is that you respect people's feelings, you respect the fact that they suffer, and that they could experience pleasure and happiness. You respect that. That's, that's the core of morality. But morality also means respecting people in their, in their aspect of beings that can experience love, that can experience solidarity and commitment with other people. So I think a moral order in, includes respecting people in ways that I don't think we have so far. We haven't set up a world that is committed to dignified humanity. We've set up a world where you get to compete, and if you win, you get the lion's share, and the people who don't win, they get the crumbs. And such a world will always nurture vice, and will create problems, bad karma, if you will, that's always gonna come to get us. If we really want morality in our laws, we have to legislate so that things are in the interest of everyone, each and every one. We have to stop playing games of exclusion. So, wow. that's my Thanks. talk. The narrative of justice. Yeah.